you're in your 30s and 40s and you've got three kids and you've got, you know, responsibilities and job and you're overstressed, doing this type of work seems like impossible. What do you say to someone like that? It isn't. It actually is really doable because the work requires for you to bake it into your life. It's not work that is a task apart from the rest of your life. It is your life. It is your life. Yeah. And, you know, the work can actually, the way that I like to structure the work is to make it very accessible. And the reason why I like to make it accessible to anyone is because I want people to do the work mm -hmm. and I want to make it as easy as possible. I've gotten that statement so many times. Well, you know, I'm a mother of three and, you know, they're all really young and how, I'm, how am I going to find the time? I always tell people, listen, you have 1,440 minutes in the day. If you take five of those minutes and do a breath work practice, you're already ahead of the game. Wow. And if you do that for an entire year, 365 days, what we know, what neuroscience is telling us is that it takes an approximate three to 400 repetitions of a nervous system restoration practice for our body memory to start shifting. Really? So if you take those 365 days, that year of those five minutes, you're already doing work that is going to be monumentally effective in you feeling more settled and like your nervous system is actually uh, experiencing a lot of ease and calm that it wasn't experiencing before you did the year. And how, how much is our partners in an intimate relationship picking up on our nervous system wounds and also our kids picking up? just by watching and observing us and being around us? How much do others pick up our pain? It's almost instantaneous. And especially the people that are closest to us, but especially children, because children are very, very keen on picking up on nonverbal cues. We actually, when we're like infants, we, that's the way that we understand whether or not the world is safe or not. We actually see the facial expression of an adult that's our caregiver. And if the facial expression is one that mirrors safety, calm, and ease, then what we interpret that as is the world is safe, I can be calm. If the adult feels preoccupied, angry, right? Like babies pick up on that and their nervous system is also picking up on that. And so it, it's important for us to actually be more attuned to the ways in which other people also pick up our energy and, 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 Perhaps that can offer more motivation for people to actually do the nervous system practices that can actually be helpful for yeah. them and their families. If if a you know a parent is watching or listening to this right now and they're thinking, "Wow, my kids are five or twelve or sixteen, and I'm just starting to realize that maybe I was too reactive based on a you know my nervous system wounds or for many years, or maybe we shouldn't have yelled at each other as parents, you know, in front of our kids." Or we shouldn't have been so reactive in situations that we were explosive and we didn't need to be. And they're starting to realize, oh, okay, this could have some long-term effects on kids. And they've been living that way for a decade with their kids growing up. What can they instantly tell themselves right now about how they've shown up? And what are some actions they can take to start breaking the cycle for themselves and their kids who still have developing minds, who maybe aren't as comfortable talking about emotions yet because they're younger still, how can they start shifting that without thinking, I've ruined my kids' lives? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's important for parents, for anyone really to understand, if I didn't know better, I couldn't do better. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't know that what you were struggling with was intergenerational trauma because you were exhibiting toxic relationship behaviors, that were reflected in your childhood home and you absorb those as the norm, as a status mm -hmm. quo, then you wouldn't know to actually disrupt those and not pass those on or not you know, exhibit those in your home. However, it's important that if you now do know better that you take action, mm -hmm. that you decide, okay, I know that there's a different way and I understand that the way that I've been behaving is unhealthy, yes. let me shift. That is already a step in the right direction. When it comes to children, it's important to understand that children can also engage in the healing process. They can. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of age appropriate ways in which we can integrate the work with children. Children can meditate. Children can do breath work. Children can talk about their emotions. 
Children can, you know, do dance parties with their parents that actually help them to release some mm -hmm. of the stress and tension of the day. And all of that can be a large part of what families can do together to actually do some collective healing and engage in age appropriate types of practices that can help their children not only absorb the healing in the moment, but also understand for the long term, for the entirety of their lives, that they can do something that can help them to heal. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, dance part, party and drawing classes together, just different things, acting, going, you know, going for a walk out, out in nature. Yeah. That's beautiful. What are some, you mentioned these nervous system restoration practices. What are the couple other examples you have for that where we can start healing the nervous system? The, the practice that I tend to in integrate into my work the most is humming. Hum humming. Humming, mm. yeah. <laughs> it's humming. so calming. It is very calming. And most people don't know you actually have this tool that you can use whenever and mm. it can actually help you feel calmer. Well, humming, I mean, there's so many, you know, there's now science that's backing all this, but this yeah. has been the, you know, ancient spiritual leaders have been oming and humming for, for thousands of years. Yes. Uh, because of the, you know, I, I think Om is like God, right? It's like you're connecting yourself to God and you're speaking like source, creator, mm -hmm. breathing it. Yes. And there's chemicals involved, there's dopamine involved, and it's calming like this feeling in your heart is starting to like get into a better rhythm, right? Yes. So there's all these benefits to this. Yes. And when we think about it from, you know, just integrating the nervous system perspective into that as well, there is, you know, we have like different branches of the nervous system. And the branch that actually helps us to feel relaxed and calm is the ventral vagal nerve, which is what tends to be stimulated when we ohm. When we ohm. Yes. And so, and so, or when we hum, right? Like typically like if I'm doing work with a family and, or with a child, you know, sometimes I'll pick a song that they like and we'll hum the song instead of singing it. Mm. And that already is an age appropriate practice that we can do that integrates the practice that we understand is going to be restorative to their nervous system. But we're not necessarily like shoving mental health, right. you know, <laughs> right, down right. their throat. Like just therapy talk all day. Yeah. Right, right. But we're, we're doing something that can be very health promoting. Now, eventually, you know, people catch on and they say, that made me feel relaxed. That made me feel more at ease, especially when I had all these like floating thoughts that just wouldn't go away. And so when these children are then older, they have the tools. And that's what I want for us. I want for us to be able to be the generation of cycle breakers that can build the tools for ourselves and for the next generation. And even if we want to maybe like pass some of that back. My parents are 65 and 71 and I do this stuff with them. Mm. And they're open and willing and they're Dominican parents, like wow. which I would have never thought would, sure. you know, like do anything that was related to mental health, period. But they're so willing right now after a couple years of talking, <laughs> yeah, yeah, talking yeah. it through. And it's beautiful to see how they have never really had any kind of like foundational orientation around how they can feel more settled, how we can actually do something to validate ourselves through the emotional process. I think that's a beautiful gift that parents can give their children. And when parents do that for themselves and their children, it's a beautiful generational gift. Yeah, it's beautiful. So the first thing I'm hearing you say is kind of the ways to start healing. 